The live stream. Uh, my name's Dave Raposa with my co boy Dan Warren. Oh. And we have Dan Luvisi. Hola. Uh, if you don't know, Crimson Daggers is a free study group, and I'm promoting this because I'm riding Dan's popularity right now. <laughs> so, uh, go to crimsondaggers.com and participate in our challenges. Even though you have no interest. <laughs> All right, guys. Seriously, <laughs> before before we begin here, I just have to say to everyone in the chat: as we get going here and we start asking questions and discussing, if you could please limit the chat to questions, <laughs> and please try not to repeat any, because the chat's already flying by insanely fast. Yeah, Dan can read quick. He's but not this, that yeah, good. Not not I, I'm not in, inhuman. So, no. and I'm not even watching. I'm just watching porn right now so yep dan's just masturbating so <laughs> i'm just jerking off like a fiend over here let's try and finish before he finishes <laughs> yeah i'm already done well goodbye <laughs> <laughs> no but uh we had a, a ton of questions they're all pretty serious <laughs> which is terrible but um i wanted to start out dan by asking you you know how did you, uh, you know, get started making your last man standing? Um, originally, I was working for some piece of shit whom I won't name, and uh, I was working alongside my business partner Stefan. And uh, to get away from the crappy work that I was doing for free, I decided to start designing characters just out of nowhere. And uh, I put them on DeviantArt. They got pretty warm welcoming. And, you know, eventually once I got to Gabriel, people started wondering what all this was about. So, you know, I figured I could probably make up a little tiny story to go along with it. I approached my business partner. I told him, let's make a book. You know, I, I think we got something here. And what was supposed to be a 70-page book ended up turning into a 230-page, I think. And, yeah, that's how it all began, just really out of boredom. <laughs> eventually oh so you so you inspired. didn't you didn't have like any real story in mind no no the characters were just for fun they were just like i was just bullshitting around <clears throat> so like over the course of the whole thing like uh just you know trying to flesh everything out like how long do you think you spent just you know working on a story for everything so that you could actually have a reason to make the book or did you just decide that you would do a bunch of images and then find a reason well, originally I was, when once I designed Gabriel, I thought he was the coolest out of everyone. So I figured, you know, I was talking to my friend Reed Southern about it, and I was saying that, you know, why don't, it would be cool to have something like if a bounty hunter went in and like broke into a type of safe house and took like a folder with all these people that he's going after. So that's what it originally was supposed to be. It was just supposed to be a, you know, like a simple folder with a character and just a little tiny write-up, nothing more. And um, eventually, the more characters I created, the more it started turning into something. And then, you know, I'd spitball with Reed back and forth, and some with some of my other friends. And uh, eventually, I came up with the whole idea of Gabriel's backstory. And then, yeah, it just kept on growing from that. So it was really I didn't have a period where I just worked on the story. It was either I was drawing and worked on the story, or I was getting inspired from the drawings, or vice versa. So, like, on top of doing everything you did with just the, the whole book and, you know, it's, it's massive, like, how much work were you doing on the side? Like, how much freelance did you have to keep up in order to maintain, you know, the ability to work on this job consistently on the side? Yeah, um, I actually got incredibly lucky. When I first started LMS, it was in, I think, the end of 2008, I think, and... Um, <laughs> Right then, I did a World War Z painting that I didn't think would go anywhere. And I put that online. It eventually blew up because people thought it was actual official art, which it wasn't. And that got me a bunch of jobs from that. So I ended up working for DC Comics from there. And then, thankfully, my good friend Darius hooked me up with a job on Your Highness. And I was able to do three months of work, which ended up keeping me afloat for like two years. Wow. So I didn't have to do any work except for DC, which would pay my rent every month. Uh, so yeah, I got really lucky. If it wasn't for that movie job, I wouldn't be able to do the book. Oh, so basically, just like, yeah, thankfully, yeah. everything lined up just right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 
So, like, how many hours do you think you actually, like, spent on this? Like, I know that you told me that you go in and you do, like, you know, like, you know, 80 hours or something into a piece. Yeah, um, I usually say that for, when I was working on the book, I was putting probably about eight hours a day, maybe a little bit more, because I would work on the comic stuff and movie stuff in the morning, and then once, like, four or five hit, I would work on that until, like, 3 a.m. in the morning. Uh, but then each each actual painting, uh, I don't know. I go by days. It usually takes me about a day to three days to finish one. Depends on how inspired I am by it. Okay. So, uh, you know, after having done all that stuff on the side and having gotten your book, you know, like, mostly going, did you actually finish it before you approached publishers? Or how did that go uh, about? The only publisher I approached was Heavy Metal because yeah. Stefan, my business partner, had a pretty good relationship with Kevin Eastman at the time. Um, so he told me, he's like, yeah, we should bring it in. So I only really came in with all the pieces that led up to Gabriel and then two new pieces. And then I put together a little bit of a pitch packet, which you know explained who the character was, the story, an example of what the book's going to look like. And... Uh, you know that's it and then I put it in a big portfolio and then I went to mypublisher.com which is actually a really good website and I created a little pitch book you know alongside to go with it um, and I went in there and I pitched it to him and uh, at first I didn't think it was going to go through at all and thankfully by the end of it they're like yeah let's do it oh that's awesome <clears throat> so I heard that you were like uh, at Comic Con with the book and everything like sold out like you I think you were telling me about that uh, yeah, yeah. No, we sold out pretty quickly of the book. Um, unfortunately, this is what happened: is that the book that went out was a book that I didn't want to go out. We had a mishap in the print um, that, like, less than a month before Comic Con, all the covers were messed up and some of the interiors were messed up. So I was really pissed that those had to go out. But yeah, we got rid of those, and then yeah, right after that, that's when everything kind of exploded. Oh, okay, so after you like settled on the publishing deal you basically had like did you have like a window of time to actually finish everything or um yeah i went in to get it published literally at the beginning of 2009 um and then i spent wait shit did i work on 2000 2010 yeah yeah 2009 yeah and then i spent the next two years just working on it or a year uh, and a half because i'd already put a year into it oh wow so uh just in general doing like this whole process and like starting out you know getting it going before you were doing all the dc stuff and everything did anybody like because i know for a lot of people doing this and uh it's, it's a question i was actually asked to ask you because a lot of people kind of get like discouraged to take on any sort of major you know like goal like that to like build up a universe and you know like, take time aside to do it just for you and hopefully eventually get something from it. Was anybody ever like discouraging you to do that? Like it's a bad idea? Um, yeah, you know, uh, do you mean during LMS or just all together? Uh, you know, all together and during LMS. Yeah, I'll start with the uh, former. Back when I was young, um, I hate to say it, but my dad really wasn't there for me too much with it. You know, he enjoyed that I was drawing. He tried to put me in sports at first and that obviously didn't work for me. So, you know, I continued to draw, but he was more of a, I believe you should go through college and, you know, do this and that. You know, the art world is going to be really tough once you get out there. I think he had that cliche of, you know, like the beach boardwalk artist that tries to sell his paintings. He thought that's what I was going to be. Uh, um, and I told him, I was like, you know, I just, you got to trust me. You know, I think I can do it. And I've had many teachers doubt me, you know, art teachers and regular teachers because, you know, I have no problem saying it. You know, I have pretty hardcore ADD. I'm not the best at school. I can't focus that well. But when it comes to art, I hyper focus. Um, so a lot of teachers were like, you know, you're never going to make it out there. It's going to be so hard for you. And I was like, all right. So I just kept on pushing. I guess that negativity really inspired me to continue to, you know, try and press those people and be like, I can do that. Um, so, you know, eventually, once I got out of high school, my dad's like, it's going to be so tough. And a week after, I got a job for some video company as, like, a concept artist. So, you know, finally he got over that. But um, as for the book, yeah, um, 
no business professionals, like, you know, people, no artists really were negative towards me. I've had a lot of support from the artist realm, but it was sadly some friends of mine, um, you know, like not the ones that have made it, but the ones that wanted to, but didn't, they were the ones that were really negative towards me and were all like, you know, what is this? You know, what are you going to do with this? Like, are you really ever going to finish it? Like I would try to show them cause I thought they might, you know, like it. And I would love to hear their feedback and they would not even care. They would try to switch the subject. Oh, so man. I don't know what's up with that, but you know, like, you know, like artists like Reed, for example, he was the one that was there for me since day one pushing me. So, you know, it was great to have that type of support. Yeah, I think me and Dan know exactly what that's like. Yeah. Yeah, you need that common artist that you can bullshit around with and spitball ideas and, you know, otherwise a lot of people don't get it. They don't get it. Like, they just think I draw something and it appears. It's like, you know, a lot of shit goes into it. Yeah, what was it like? Uh, I mean, like, I, you must have had, you know, like, I know, I know for me, and I know it's the same for Dan, you know, the other Dan, that uh, we, you know, like, we, we would do this stuff, and everybody's sort of against you along the way, but then as soon as everything goes through, people are like, oh, that's awesome. Oh, or yeah. like, you know, like, they totally turn around, and they're like, it's great. Well, yeah, they, they fight you the whole way. Exactly, yeah, and I had people like that. Like, you know, I had to say, but my dad was kind of like that. And, you know, there was some... Um, We'll get to that once we get to the film side, but uh, Hollywood is exactly like that. You know, no one wants it at first, and then the moment it's sold, why didn't you call us? We would have taken it. It's like, dude, we did meet with you guys. Like, we did show it to you. <laughs> you didn't want it. Um, and now they all want to be my best friend now and want to hear my next project. So, yeah, mm. it's weird. Well, that's a good segue. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, moving on to that. Yeah, what was that like? You know, like having that whole project being done, selling out of the book, and then, you know, like, what was that like what prompted you to sell it as a movie? Um, to be completely honest, when I first started LMS, I know a lot of people were like, bullshit. And like some people tell me that I created the book just for a movie. Honestly, never had that intention. Never even thought it would become a book. Um, I created it and I just put my heart into it. It was something that I really wanted to see done as a book and I wanted to prove myself that I could do it because it's something I've never done before um, so you know I just went balls out on it and thankfully enough uh, once the book was finally finished I showed it to Kevin because he hadn't seen anything since the first day we met so he had no idea what the book was so once I finally brought it in he was like alright I gotta bring in my guys he brought in who are now my marketing and one of my producers uh, Peter Levin and Russell Binder and they saw the book and they're like this is like a toy series and a movie and a comic. They're like, you know, you can do everything with this. Um, so from there, we then set up meetings with a bunch of studios. Uh, it was a little hard pitching this because, you know, it's such an expansive type of book and it's, yeah. you know, it's not very, it's not really narrative in a way. So it was really hard to pitch it, but thankfully I pitched it. Um, I got through some of them. Through the first six studios that we pitched it to, everyone said no. Um, they all said that they love the book, they love the art, they think the story's awesome, but it's just such an unknown property, and yeah. uh, it's just like, you know, like, we don't know, like, you know, some people are like, well, we already have this sci-fi, so we don't want to, like, step on that one's toes, and I'm just like, ugh. So, finally, we took it to Summit. Summit said yes, they wanted to do it, but unfortunately, there was a bit of a delay with them, they were taking their time. So this is where everything really blew up. Right after Comic Con, um, one of Stefan's friends had the book, and he was meeting with someone totally unrelated to LMS. And I guess the book fell out of the guy's bag, and the producer saw it, picked it up, and was like, "What is this?" And he's like, "No, it's my buddy's book." And he's like, "I'll be right back." And he took the book. He went to Warner Brothers. He met with the head of it, and was like, "I want this." And the guy was like, "All right, go buy it." They called me that day. It was like the craziest day ever. They called me as I was having lunch, and he was like, hey, uh, you know, I hear you have this property, blah, blah, we would love to buy it. And I was like, okay. And he's like, you know, we can put on like some big names on it, like we would love to do it with you. And I was like, all right, but Summit already has it. We're not ship or shopping anymore. So he was like, all right. So he went to Warner Brothers anyways, <laughs> and they're like, they definitely want to buy it. They made an offer to me. It was an incredibly nice offer. Um, I was like, okay. So we went back to Summit, and Summit was like, well, here's an even better offer. 
And then Paramount came in, and I was like, well, here's an even better offer. And then they all started competing. And it became uh-huh. a bidding war. And then, yeah, it just it got crazy from there. And finally, you know, without getting into details, because I'll remain that to myself, um, it got to the point where I went with the studio that gave us the best deal and who treated my people the best. And, um, you know, eventually once we got all that taken care of, yeah, it just it was one of the craziest days. I'll never forget that. Yeah, that sounds insane. Yeah. I'd be, like, pissing myself. I know. <laughs> just crying. <laughs> I know, that's what I was like. You know, my phone is just, like, buzzing. And then, like, when we finally sold it and once it got online and everything, all these studios were coming in. Like, Disney was like, we would have bought that. And then Universal <laughs> and all these people are like, you guys should have gone out of your way then. But, yeah, it was nuts. Yeah, so what is it like now? I mean, do you have, uh, did you retain any, like, control over the movie or, like, uh... uh yeah, I got away with murder with my deal. Uh, my lawyers really stepped it up and put on their A game. Um, you know, I get a percent of all merchandise. I get a percent of the budget that the movie makes. I mean, box office. Um, I'm a producer on it. You know, most creators might get an executive or co-producer, which means that they don't really have much say. Mm. Um, but yeah, I've been in every meeting for the movie. Um, you know, I originally came up with the treatment alongside my producer for the movie. Uh, but yeah, no, I mean, it, they've been, Paramount's been great to me. They've been really cool. Then I wish I could talk about the names that they've been throwing out, but it's all people that I'm very impressed with. And it's not just a bias, like, I'm just going to say, yeah, just to, you know, please them. They're all people where I'm like, holy shit, yeah, if you could pull this off, this would be amazing. So, so uh, r- sorry, what's up? I was just going to say, like, so do you have any sort of, like, realistic timeline as to, like, how it's going to proceed and, and where it's going to go and, like, uh, you know, some sort of window of when you might yeah. be seeing something from it? Uh, well, we just hired the writer back in December. He's writing it right now. Uh, we're supposed to get a first draft by the end of February, so I can finally read it then. If all goes well, I would say probably mid, late 2012 we could start production mm-hmm. and then you know get a movie by 2014 if all uh, goes well that's yeah. awesome so yeah. like because you uh you know because you sold that and you got that moving along do you find now that it's much easier for you to you know move forward on everything you want to do like do you think like it, that's what it took and now you know like as you move on working on new oh, projects yeah. it's just no, it's, it's just so much easier and better and it's totally different now. It's like I can go into a meeting now and people will take me seriously. Like before, you could just tell that people are just like, <laughs> and just kind of like looking around. And now when I walk in, people like, like I, I'm really I don't like talking about myself like this type of stuff. So I'm just gonna give an example. But people like go out of their way to shake my hand now, and people will like you know come over to me and focus and be like you know so great to meet you. And now you're like before you just be like, who's this? Oh, this is Dale and Vicia. Oh, okay, cool. What are you pitching? You know, it's like they didn't care. So now there's a level of respect, which is really cool. You know, like, I don't mind either way, but it's just nice. If you're going to take them seriously, it's nice that they take you seriously. So, yeah, that's awesome. you know, that's that's good. And as for, like, getting work, it's, it's helped so much. Like, you know, just proving to people, hey, I can do this. And since the book has a lot of different styles, it's like I can do more than just paint digitally. You know, I can do this type of stuff and 2D work and blah, blah, blah. So, yeah, no, it's... It's really opt out a lot, and it's helped me get these other meetings for my next book. Without you know, yeah. yeah. So because you have that sold out now, and, and you're working on a, you're working on your next project, right? Yeah, I'm working on Redemption right now, which is my next book, which doesn't have anything to do with LMS. It's completely different, completely different story. Um, and yeah, I'm pitching that. I've been pitching it around recently. And I got a meeting with someone pretty big tomorrow, who I'm very excited about. And then a few meetings after that, so hopefully someone will take it up and I can finish the book. Because the book's going to be a pain in the ass. The book, LMS had 40 or so actual paintings in it. Redemption has 150. So mm. I'm really happy to go all out on it. So what what did you have to do for this, like, uh, as far as a pitch goes? Like, do you have to, um... Did you have to spend, like, a... Uh, you know, a ton of time working on a, like a, a huge pitch, or was it just like a few pieces because they trust you? Or no, nah, at first it was like four pieces of art, five pieces of art, and then that wasn't really doing it. So I did like ten. That was kind of getting us there, and eventually I got to fourteen, 
and each piece that I did was a part of the book. They're all going to be in the book, but I designed them to use them as like um, like blocking points, like of the story. So if I get to a certain part of the story, if I go like these guys go here, I can show that location, like a painting of it, or this battle happens here, I can show another painting that resembles that. Um, so that's helped out a lot. I mean, because as most artists know, and I'm sure you know, Dave, that usually the business people don't get it. Like, they don't see it like we do. So I have to, you know, make sure that they understand what I'm talking about. Otherwise, it's just words to them. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta literally detail it out. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I did 14 pieces, and then I had, like, a 12-page treatment, which I just pitch, you know, off the top of my brain. Well, I got a... Dan sent me one of his n n never before scenes. Never before seen. So you guys have seen it first. So check it out. It's redemption. Ah, so many details. Nice. It's pretty sweet. So you so got a nice. hundred and how many of these <laughs> to do? Uh, hundred fifty. <laughs> I have fifteen uh, so far. Jesus Christ. Fuck. Uh, so it's literally one ten. I mean, one yeah. one one. Yeah. 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 Wow, that's a lot of work. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, going over everything, it's like, you know, we talked a lot about what you've been doing now. Uh, you know, current stuff. Do you want to open it up to the chat now, and Dan can start fielding questions? Yeah, I've already written down a bunch of questions. Guys, if you're writing down questions in the chat, I'm not going to look at them. I have a bunch of questions that people have already asked. I wrote down the best ones since we started. When I get to the end, I'll open it up to anyone else that has anything. But if you type anything, I won't be looking. So, That's awesome, uh, by the way, Dan. It's cool. Thank you. Yeah, it looks great. We're at 530 viewers now, so if everyone's asking, I, there's no way to read it. So, <laughs> um, Okay. So one of the biggest questions we got from a bunch of people is um, how did you find, this is a common question, a lot of people wonder, is um, how did you find the switch from traditional to digital? And um, is there anything you had like a snag with? Was it seamless? Did you struggle? Um, yeah, actually, yeah, that's a good question. Uh, when I was, I've been drawing with pencils. I always throw this age out because it's honestly like, I remember the day perfectly, but I was around four. And I started drawing, Dave, I know you're related to Ninja Turtles, but uh, Leatherneck, the alligator yeah. character that wore the jean shorts. I remember my dad drew a picture of him, and I was like, holy shit, I got to draw that. And uh, I took out some crayons and did it. And ever since then, I've been drawing with, you know, like colored pencils and pencils. Um, never dabbed into paints or anything. Um, was always black and white. Um, and I did that until about 15 I didn't really take any classes. I took a few, but it was, you know, boring shit. So once I turned 15, I had a some video game magazine that had a painting in it for uh, the Fellowship of the Ring video game for, like, Xbox. And there was a painting by Justin Sweet. And I was like, holy shit, you know, like, I got to learn how to do this. This is awesome. So I brought it down to my dad, and I was like, hey, could you buy me a tablet? And uh, he was like, all right. So he picked me up a... Intos, like one, like the first ones that ever came out. And back yeah. then, this was 10 or 11 years ago. This is back when like digital painting was like just beginning. Like I don't know like if, when it first started, but I think this is when it started to get more exposed because there was nothing on DeviantArt about it. Mm -hmm. So like I was trying, I was trying to do it over and over, but just, you know, like I wasn't getting it. I sucked, I was terrible. Like uh, my shit was just terrible. So I eventually gave up, and I was like, I can't do this. It's just too hard. So I took like a two-month break, kept on working with pencils, and I was like, you know what, fuck it. I got to go back. I'm going to learn this. So I just kept at it, and I kept at it. And to be honest, it took me like five years to get a hang of it. Um, you know, like I look at artists now, and people get a hang out of it in like a month or two. Well, that was like, back. That was also back yeah, when like nobody no used it. Yeah, there's no tutorials. There's no videos. There's no brushes. It was just what you had on Photoshop, and those were the shitty Photoshops, too. Yeah. Yeah, so, no, it was really tough, but uh, now I've just been using it ever since, and I can't imagine not using it. Like, I love painting digitally, especially with the tablet that you can get now. Cool. So, yeah, so uh, what was the other part of the question, Dan? It was just, um, just in general, how did you find the transition from traditional to digital? Oh, yeah. Any snags? 
Well, yeah, like the problem with the, I guess the biggest problem was drawing with an Intos, you can't look at the screen. You know, like you're, I tried using one recently and I felt retarded doing it. Um, now that I have this Intiq, like, oh, I can't imagine like going back to that. It's just, it's a great tablet. Cool. Cool, cool. Yeah, we got a bunch of other stuff here. Um, one question we got a ton of in the chat. Um, aside from the obvious answer of like, you know, you begin by beginning, you know, doing the drawings, making the characters come up with the story. How do you start the process of pitching something to a company? Do you wait for them to find you? Do you actively go find them? Once you've got all your stuff going, the characters develop the story, some art going, how do you then make that transition of promoting it, selling it? Um... Pretty much, I got extremely lucky with the people that I met. I've met a great group of people who have done nothing but push me and continue to enforce my ideas. Um, I would say that, you know, it's really all about networking. You know, get out there, know people, meet people. Uh, because without that, you know, one person can open 10 doors for you. And that's what happened with me. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't think I would have the balls to go out there and try to pitch my stuff if I didn't have the team I have now. Uh, they have not only opened doors for me, but they have introduced me to huge people that I would never, you know, ever imagine myself to be sitting in the same room with. So, you know, I've got really lucky on that. Um, if you don't have those type of people, just put out your art, you know, make yourself known, be your number one cheerleader, uh, promote your shit wherever you can. Uh, you know, Dave, I'm gonna use you as an example, but you do a fucking great job at it. Your stuff's everywhere because, you know, you hustle it, and that's what you really have to do. Um, so yeah. Cool. Um, do you study, did you ever study, and if you did, and if you still do, how do you focus your studies, what do you try to learn the most from, et cetera, to improve your work? Um, I don't say, I don't think I would say I study. What I do is I really just try to get inspired by everything. I have a folder of about let me see how many pieces are in here. Um, yeah, there is fifteen thousand pieces of art in the folder that I have, <laughs> and I will just go through that, and I'll literally just like put it in preview mode and just hit the arrows and just look at everything. And not that I'm like stealing anything, but it'll just a natural like inspiration will just come from that. Like I'll go like, oh, this piece is awesome, or this concept's awesome, or like shit, this guy really stepped it up here. Like, what can I do? And uh, you know, I'll learn from that. I've learned so much about my style from other people, you know, just by our films or music. Um, you know, I unfortunately I didn't have the money to go to college, um, so you know, I was never able to do that. Uh, so I really, yeah, <laughs> that's what I've heard. <laughs> you so I up. had, yeah. So I had to, uh, you know, basically teach myself. Um, and like I said, you know. A lot of people are like, do you, are there like any artists that you're in like competition with or you wish you're better than? And I'm like, no, you know, I don't think that at all. What I do is I look at other artists as inspiration and I look as, at myself as competition. Like you should always try to better yourself and always try to make sure your last piece is, I mean, your next piece is better than your last. Yeah. Um, you know, like when I see like example again, like Dave's work, I go like, holy shit, this guy's fucking awesome. Like. How can I make my stuff look like that? You know, but do it in your own style. Don't try to mimic. That's one thing I hate when an artist tries to mimic your style. Oh, Don't do that, because then everyone's just gonna say your stuff looks like this guy. Yeah, exactly. It's like the internet right now. There's like yeah. there's one there's one Kakai, and then there's like fifty thousand Kakais. Yeah. They just aren't they just aren't as Kakai. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> Okay, so that being said, uh, who are your biggest visual style influences? Can you talk about any artists that you look at more frequently than others and who might have had a hand in the visual development of uh, LMS? Uh, yeah, if we're talking about artists, like actual digital artists, uh, you know, Greg Broadmore, uh, Sid Mead, I'm fucking terrible with names, I'm blanking out right now, uh, Justin Chan, that's his name, right? Dave? Massive black guy. <laughs> Jason Chan. Jason, 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 Jason Chan. There you go. Um, yeah, John Howe, Alan Lee. Uh, cool. um, yeah, you know, but it, more so like in director, like Ridley Scott's a big influence. Yeah. Um, 
old George Lucas, not new George Lucas. Dude, yeah. I love I love that you can always see that. You can always see when somebody loves Ridley Scott because there's tons of floaty bits. Yeah. <laughs> floaty it's bits. just shit yeah. everywhere. Yeah, I know. Yeah. If you look at Alien, it's just like, shit still lives up today. Um, but yeah, you know, just uh, I'm, I'm very inspired by movies since it's what I want to work on. If I could name a, yeah, Jones is good, as Julia just said, or Julia, whatever. Uh, I'm really inspired by Weta, you know, Richard Taylor, all the guys at Weta. They're one of my main inspirations. Blur, Digital Domain, um, all those guys are great. Uh, Legacy, so kind of like my artist folder. Do you look yeah. to a lot of like, uh, you know, like 3D render kind of stuff when you're doing your oh, yeah. work? Yeah, no, I'll go to Zebra Central all the time and look at their shit and get inspired by that. I can't do any of that. I wish I could. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'll look at that. Um, I'll go to like CG Hub, um, Concept Art, sometimes Deacon Art. Um, and yeah, sometimes, you know, you'll find goodies here and there. Mm. Cool. We had a bunch of questions in the chat about your method. Uh, people wanted to know if there's any set kind of practice you go through in terms of like steps. Do you start with reference? Do you use any kind of photo templating to get your realism? Just in general, start big an image, start to finish. What kinds of things do you do in what order? All right, so let's say for this redemption piece, like right here that you guys are looking at, um, what I wanted to do is there's a part in the story where this big battle goes down. And this is kind of the aftermath. I can't explain what this picture is or what it's supposed to be about, so that kind of sucks. But, um, so the, you know what, what I want is like an after the battle shot. So I looked up a bunch of like reference from Iraq and Afghanistan of kind of like shell shock soldiers and watched some documentaries. Anything I saw, just that like vacant look in the eye, um, I would take, you know, reference of and, you know, create like a little, uh, like mirage of it. So then after that, what I'll do is I'll do a little thumbnail sketch of what I want the picture to look like. Um, and then from there, I will create, I'll boost the resolution up to print size, put a white layer on top of the sketch, um, decrease the opacity to about 50%, and then trace over my sketch with a, like a thin brush to basically create like a detailed line art. From there, what I'll do is, once I have the line art completely done, which takes a while, I will um, begin blocking in colors underneath the line art. And then once I have all my colors set, I'll then merge the line art with parts of the color, the layers, certain layers, and then begin rendering it piece by piece. Um, so yeah, that's how I pretty much do that. So do you try and map out your values like right from the start or do you build up? Um, I'll map out my values right from the start. Pretty much like I've seen your uh, work in progress, pretty much like what you do. You know, like I'll, where there's light parts, obviously it's gonna be lighter there, dark parts, but then once I get like the final image, I will go in. I'll use curve layers and you know drop down some parts a little bit more, and uh, yeah, go from there. Cool. Cool. Um, in in that same kind of vein of that question, do you always begin with a tight line drawing? A couple people were wondering if you ever just start blocking in shapes and just painting, or if you're more of a drawing oriented person. Yeah, I'm more drawing oriented. I can't uh, like I see some people that like I'm sure I could block in shapes but it's just not my style i like having like a guide to go off of and to you know just keep it simple like because you know i'm very detailed as i'm sure you guys can tell um so i like to you know make sure that everything is perfect so it all looks exactly the way i want it mm. <clears throat> yeah plus, i can see like board. ocd tendencies in this <laughs> yeah like dave i'm gonna send you a full res prop right now so you can show it you'll see okay. what i mean you where are you sending it to can you send it through Skype? Is it faster through there? Uh, it'll be easier than enough to pull up like Windows and all that stuff. Okay. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much how I did. Is it even sending right now? Yeah. Oh, it's not showing on mine. Um, but yeah. So um, a bunch of people are asking this. I wasn't going to ask this, but I will just because people are repeating it constantly. Uh, you put up some brushes on DeviantArt, I guess, and people want to know if you're putting up more brushes and when. And they love your brushes; they want more of those brushes. <laughs> uh, because honestly, by downloading yeah. by downloading your brushes, they become you. And now that you're now that you're better than you were, they want to become the new you. I don't use any new brushes. You know, like I still use 
all of the same shit that's in that pack. I mean, I would go to oh. Reach Brushes, if anything. Uh, here, I'm going to put a little... There, go to his page. Oops, forgot the art. Uh, go to his page. He's got the newest ones. And then I have some of Dave's brushes. You sent me some. I use some of yours. But I really all I use is that chalk brush. Yeah, that's like the one thing. It's I mean, do you want to dispel that myth for everybody? Now yeah. that there's a ton of people here, we say what? it all the time, guys. I don't know why it hasn't sunk in yet. Custom brushes don't make you crazy good. <laughs> like, you uh, can have fifty-seven thousand brush packs, and it's not going to change anything. Yeah, it's not, not going to do anything. I use I honestly use one brush. That's all I use. Um, if no, I use that brush, and then I'll use a soft brush if I'm using like glowing areas or whatever. Yeah, but uh, it's like I mean, like that's the one thing is like people see like a texture on top of like a final product or something, or like an incorporated texture, and they assume that just because that's there, <laughs> all of a sudden everything else built up to that was like <laughs> bullshit. <laughs> oh no, no! Here, show this latest piece or this one that I show you. I'll show you how I do some of the textures on there. Most yeah, of my I just opened the grain that. that I put on. Is this the one that I have up right now, right? It's, yeah, it's, uh, a, it's, a, it's a close up of his eye or whatever. Oh, you sent me uh, the. I think it's the same exact one. Fucking Christ. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it, this, this was. This is even larger, damn it. <laughs> this is a. This is, a... Really gonna, is it going to kill you? What? Is it going to kill your connection if I just email it? No, I just. Uh, I don't know. It'll be done in a second. Uh, I'll just wait. Um, so yeah, like a, a yeah, this is this is a good, pretty good one. Oh, are you gonna keep going with the brush thing? Oh no no, I mean, we're done with the brush stuff. <laughs> oh, okay, uh, I had a, I had one, I had one good question. Um, a lot of people have problem with this. They talk about it on the stream a lot. Is uh well obviously before Paramount got into a bidding war for your IP, which is awesome. What motivated you to keep going when you were you know beginning out as an artist before before everything kind of worked out? Towards the end, how did uh, how did you keep going? Um, I just you know I was I don't know art's been the only thing that I'm really good at to be honest. Um, I've never really progressed too well in any other things, so I just figured fuck this is the only thing that's gonna make me money. I might as well just stick at it and just kept on pushing and pushing and pushing and eventually got me to where I am now. Mm. Uh, but yeah, here's that detail piece that you can see. Yeah, I'm just scrolling around. So, like, you see that here, Dave, up? You see those little, like, that metal stuff, the metal wiring on the helmet? Yeah. Like, that, what that is, is just, you know, most people are like, is that a texture? Um, that is a polygon shape, which I then duplicated, made a pattern of it, and then set the, the level or bevel, whatever, and a boss filter to it, and that's what created the lighting on it. Other than that, like... Like that one right there is a carbon fiber texture on that little bar that's going across. Yeah. But most of that shit's all painted, all those scratches and all that stuff. You might have already said this, but uh, a lot of people are asking how long did a piece like this take you from start to finish? This one took a week because it's really. This is full. Is that full resolution as far as you can go? Uh, I can go in closer, I guess. I don't know what full res is. Once it gets pixelated. Yeah, see, that's full res. Gross. <laughs> Just spending so much time on it. Yeah. Would you do you want to talk about uh how you get realism in a piece? Because I mean, like I can see that when you're doing it, you know, like you go, like there's a lot of soft versus hard in the focal area. Yeah. And then right. as you move away, you go soft. I mean, like if I move around to the outside of your helmet here, there's like a blurred line. You know, just as you move away from the focal, all that yeah. kind of stuff. Um, really, the realism is just, I, I would honestly say it's all in that grain. Like, the grain layer that I add to it just gives it a certain type of realism. It feels like a photo, almost. Um, and then, like I said, I'm just, I'm a sucker for detail, so I'll try to put in as much as I can. Like, if you, <laughs> like if you look at the shit on the What back, is that noise? Oh, that? Yeah. There's a guy drilling outside. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Sounded like some insane squeaky hamster cage. <laughs> <laughs> some hamster, hamster wheel hamster. going hamster crazy. Uh, oh my god. It's alright. 
Uh, here's a question. Um, can you talk a little bit about your career before Last Man Standing, um, before development on that? What kind of stuff did you do? What kinds of jobs were you working? Um, yeah. Um, before this, before LMS ever started, I barely worked anywhere. I had a lot of shitty jobs. I worked for like indie video game developers who had no money and paid me in coupons, honestly. <laughs> uh, a guy who literally paid me in an in and out coupon once. <laughs> and mailed it to me for like two free meals. I was like, thanks. Uh, uh, yeah, but nothing really that ever took off. Like, honestly, I was the colors for uh, DC. I was getting ripped off by the artists I was working with. That sucked. Um, yeah, no, I didn't have anything. I, like I said, I worked at a video game company once I got out of high school. That was only for like a couple months. Um, and then after that, it was dead. It wasn't really until I met my business partner that things started to take off. Hmm. Cool. Mm -hmm. So, like, uh, you can reinforce to everybody that it's all about just doing exactly what you want. Yeah, you know, just pushing at it, just not giving up. A lot of people give up. They get, you know, they get really scared and. They feel like it's just too tough. And a lot of the worst thing that a lot of artists do is that they expect to be the best the moment they touch their tablet. And it's like, it takes time. You know, as I'm sure you both know, it's like, I've been fucking drawing forever. It took me 11 years to get where I'm at now. Um, and a lot of artists just expect to, you know, be fucking Michelangelo overnight. It's like, it doesn't happen like that. You know, you got to put your all into it, and not give up. Yeah, okay. I mean, like, like what Dan's doing right now. I mean, like if anybody knows Dan's live stream, like he's on there every day for like, you know, eight to like 14 hours a day, just yeah. doing the work and studying and learning. And he's been doing that, you know, he did that straight for like two weeks and then he'd been doing it every day for the past, like how long? I've been doing it every day for seven months now, but the past two weeks have been live 10 hours or more a day. Yeah, it's like, I mean, like, that's, like, that's the kind of thing, though. It's like, you, you gotta be willing to, like, go all in. Yeah, well, I live by the code that, you know, every day you're not working, someone else is catching up with you. And mm. it's like, that's why I just continue to push. Last year, when I couldn't draw for six months, I wanted to fucking kill someone. You know, having a busted arm, like, put me, made me realize how much I adore and need art in my life. And, you know, made me realize how much of a workaholic I am. Like, oh, with can LMS, you? Yeah, I was spending crazy hours. Yeah, like with, with your with your arm though. Can you talk about that? Like you fucked it up actually working, right? Yeah, I was working on redemption. I was getting the pitch ready, and I painted nine, no, seven to nine. I don't remember exactly what. Seven to nine paintings in a month, like these type of paintings, the ones that you guys are looking at. This is one of them. Um, I wish I could show you another one that was maybe more detailed than this, and. During the eighth or ninth one, my arm was just like, no, stop. And like my entire elbow, my entire forearm, my bicep, my shoulder just went out of whack. And like it literally hurt to draw. And I was like, all right, it's probably going to go away in like a few days or a week. Ugh. Month later, nothing. Two months later, nothing. Three Sucks. months later, nothing. Yeah, and I could not draw. Like I just would walk around in my apartment wanting to fucking kill myself. Because like I would try to draw on it, I could get 15 minutes in and go, I can't do this anymore. And Jeez. thankfully, I'm okay now. Um, but yeah, it was you gotta take fucking breaks. <laughs> yeah, that's like the one thing that like I, I like to talk about that kind of stuff because we do the study group and you know there's so many people who think that it's all about just like sitting there and doing absolutely nothing but fucking drawing, and that's not what it is. Yeah, take a walk, go outside. Yeah, it's like you need to like stretch out your arm. You need to like you should if you have the time and you can, you know, like work out, like get your muscles moving so that you're actually a human being. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, for sure. Um, I find that walks are what really do it for me. You know, go for an hour walk, put on music, and just zone the fuck out. And when you come back, you feel fresh and ready to do it again. And then hand exercises too. You know, besides jerking off. Yeah, so stress like you, you had to do that, right? I mean, like, I'm assuming you went to like a, the doctor or whatever. Uh, no, I actually never did. A lot of people are telling me, like, Fool. you should go and get a, I know. They're like, you should go and get a cortisone shot in your elbow. And I was like, I don't know if I can do that because I hate shots. So I just toughed it out for a bit. Um, and then towards November, 
um, December-ish, I was like, you know, I, I can't do this anymore. I can't just sit here and wait. And I started drawing again. I got the new Cintiq, which helped out a lot in the positioning. Um, and yeah, now it's just like, it's night and day the way I work. Dave, what do you, one? no, I, I can't use those. You I don't, I don't <laughs> like them. Dave, I don't. I have I have the UX and I love the UX, but it's it's so weird. Like the values and the colors are so off that I stopped using it over time. For like two oh, years, it's all I really want the HD. Dude, the HD is seriously it's like. But it's like it. Dave has never used a Cintiq, so for him to make that switch now after like six odd years of a regular tablet, you know, it's it's kind of weird. Uh, you've well, never like, used one at all. No, I have. I've like played with them, but I I didn't. I never owned one. I'm just saying that. Every time I used it, I liked the idea of not seeing my hand. Yeah. yeah. Like, I like being able to see the whole image while I'm working on it. Uh, like, so I, like, I never really you have wanted a to... Have a monitor that you're drawing on? Like, I like drawing with a Cintiq better than on a regular oh, yeah. tablet. But uh, for, in terms of rendering, I agree. I don't like seeing my hand. But for drawing, it's, like, so much better. Yeah. Just my no, opinion. I, actually, we had a, we had a really good question, Dan. Actually, if you don't mind, um, this is kind of a cool this is kind of a cool one. This didn't cross my mind, and uh, I don't think I heard Dave ask it. But um, we had a question about the consistency problem, and doing as much work as you're doing, piece by piece by piece, with each one as good as it is. Obviously, over time, you've seen an incline in your work. So when you're doing a big project like the current one you're doing, um, when you've got 150 pieces to do. Do the ones that you do at the beginning of the project inevitably somehow look worse in comparison to the ones at the end? Do you ever revisit stuff to try and bring them all to the same level? Yeah. Um, well, here's the thing. Is that I'll give a little story bit. I can't say much, but with these paintings that you're looking at, what they're supposed to be are photographs in the book. Um, so I have to... Like each piece needs to look as real as possible. I mean, as real as I can push it. So it's like I kind of have to force myself into that mode where it's like I can't let them look painted in a way. So, but like at the same time, I, like right now, for example, I'm looking at some of the older pieces and while they don't look too different, you can definitely tell that there's a change in style a bit. So it's mm -hmm. like, you know, I always got to focus on that, but. Yeah, it'll probably be tough with this one because I'm going to be working on this until late 2013, probably. Yeah. So I'm sure my work's going to change a lot over the next uh, two years. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. I mean, I definitely tell it change. I just don't know how that's going to affect the book. Yeah. yeah, I mean, like, the one thing about that is, like, everybody always says those kind of things. It's like, if you always went back and revisited it, you'd never get anything done. It's like yeah. it's always so like I mean it's a decision I guess I guess it depends on everybody's comfort level with their work in there especially if you're doing a project but it's like you know to a to a degree you can't just sit on one thing for you know months yeah yeah exactly yep uh, I have a question this is like something that tons of people ask it's you know like since you're doing oh god. <laughs> The guy's like coming into your apartment. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Just drilling through the door. Hey, you mind? <laughs> Sliding in. <laughs> drilling my desk as I'm sitting here. <laughs> but uh, what I wanted to ask is like, uh, tons of people talk about this. You know, like when you're working on something forever and you're constantly into what you're doing, like. How do you make time to do personal stuff? You know, like especially during when you when you were doing like a LMS and you didn't have, you know, you didn't necessarily have all the funds to, you know, do everything or whatever, or you hadn't sold anything yet. Like, how did you make time, or did you necessarily make a lot of time to actually go out and make sure you did stuff, met people, and all that? Um, like what what point in my life are we talking? Are we talking about like after high school or? I'm saying like in it, it like. Like now versus the versus like when you started LMS, like how, you know, like how did you go about like uh, living? <laughs> <laughs> like how did I have fun? Yeah, like did you go out? Like for me, for me, like when I was studying and I was really trying to do something, it was like a desperate struggle. It was like I was trying to change my whole world 
so like I would obviously I would go out less and I would do less things and I wouldn't yeah. participate in the world as often until until I could get to a point where I felt like you know I had done something you know what I mean yeah uh, no what I do is you know I don't really go out much to be completely honest uh, I'll only go out like if I go to see a movie with a friend or go out to dinner uh majority of people that have meeting like new contact and stuff have been through meetings you know I actually are drinks but other than that you know I'm pretty much a hermit I stay at home a lot so you just don't care yeah no I don't care I would rather yeah. be doing this than going out to like a party or some shit do you think like I mean like for me I feel like uh, while you should still be doing things it does take that kind of uh, you know like whether it's a a conscious decision to make a commitment or not you know like it does take that sitting down and just working through it yeah. even if there's like tons of shit going on because for a lot of people starting out they're like yeah but I can't do this because of this and that and my friends want me to go smoke pot and I gotta go to this party and I gotta whatever whatever and it's like mm-hmm. well yeah but you gotta make a decision between what's important to you now you no, know exactly yeah no I mean that's how it was when I was in high school, like everyone was like, "Hey, we're gonna go do this party, and we're gonna go do this and that, and all." Uh. And you know, you'd be the fucking loser if you didn't win. But now I'm at where I'm at in my life, and they're still working, you know, their shitty job. So it's like I focused on doing all this and staying at home and being that nerd, so I could finally get to this point in my life. And you know, I'm proud of it. I'm glad I did it. Um, you know, I'm determined. That's the whole difference. There's followers and there's leaders. There's going to be those people that really put in their all and get to where they want to get at. And there's going to be the people that say, oh, yeah, I'm going to get there one day. And then go out and do stupid bullshit and never get to it. Yeah. Yeah, so you hear that, guys? If you're in the study group, <laughs> you got to be focused. Yeah. Or else yep. it's just never going to happen. Yeah. But then when you're rich and famous... Then you can go out. Then you can go out and get laid. Just grab a big bowl of cocaine. <laughs> Just go Just get some cocaine. Go get it's some about, cake. It's about making the money now so you can lose yeah. it all later. <laughs> so, I want a hooker. Call it a night. We get a few questions here that have been repeated a few times. I think... I mean, I think I already know the answer to this one, but you, you wrote LMS, right? Yeah. Okay, I thought so. Yeah, he wrote it, guys. Um, we get this question all the time, no matter who comes on. Uh, what are your tips for getting into the industry? How do you have that competitive edge that catches the eye? <laughs> Worst. <laughs> Worst question. I get it all the time, and people won't stop spamming it, so i uh, put it to rest. Dude, I, I don't know. I mean... Like you guys, I can put my shit online, and someone was like, "Dude, you want to work for us?" And I was like, "Yeah, sure, let's do it." You know, I never really, I've never gone out of my way to go to a company and like sign up and try to work with them. Yeah, uh, they've come to me. Uh, so yeah, but then again, at the same time, I'm not really trying to get a job doing that. Um, here's a quote that my business partner told me. Now I can never think otherwise. Is that I used to want to work for Pixar, and I used to want to work for. What uh, an ILM and digital domain and all these people, and he was like, "Why would you want to work for them when one day they could work for you?" And I yeah. was like, "Huh, exactly." <laughs> you know, and yeah. then I created my own book, and then Richard Taylor from Weta wrote a quote on it and said that he wants to work on the LMS movie. And it's like shit like that means so much more to me than working for them. So mm-hmm. I don't know. I would say just be your own boss, be your own artist, do what you want to do, create this IP. Is a, uh, I mean that that question, guys. I only asked it because so many people were spamming it. That question sucks. But uh, I actually, actually, I actually like this this next question because it's different for everybody. Um, when you're doing your projects, do you do you usually start by fleshing out the story and getting everything set, and then developing the characters in the world and around it, or do you start with the characters and come up with the story later? Or we um, we know that we know that you did you didn't do that with LMS. Did you yeah. find that that's something you needed to do with the next one in order to get all your shit together? Yeah. No. Well, here, I'll explain how LMS works and how Redemption works. With LMS, what I did is that, obviously, I was creating the whole book as a whole, like, piece by piece. Um, but for the majority of the characters, I would design them first, 
and as I'm designing them subconsciously, I'm already thinking about the story of who these characters are, and I'm getting to that, you know, who is this person, and what do they do, and why do they wear this, and why do they have that, and like, there's one character, uh, for whoever has the book, the father, he has a bunch of ears on like a necklace around his neck, and um, all ears, like, yeah, and I was like sitting there, and did, I just designed it because I thought it looked cool on the guy. But now it's like one of the major points in the actual comic series when he's introduced, and like you find out what those years represent, and like it's this big story arc in his character uh, piece. So, Is it Dolph Lundgren? Yeah, no, exactly. <laughs> Sylvester <laughs> Stallone and Arnold. Um, but yeah, uh, but for Redemption, for example, um, I still don't have I don't have a single page written for Redemption, but no. I know who all the characters are already, um, and I know what they all look like. I know what weapons they use. I know their backstories. I know their names. Um, so I'm designing them one by one, and just going from there. Oh, cool. So it's like uh, sort of what it sounds like is you design a character, and then based on what he's wearing, based on who he is, his attitude, you design a culture around it. Yeah, exactly. That's good. I mean, that's that's sort of like the same idea that like I always have with Dan when we do stuff. Yeah. Problem yeah. solve within the characters own design hmm I'm looking for that's uh, it it's yeah it's just like I'm looking at the chat looking for more questions that haven't already been answered I'm not seeing a ton uh, guys I've been posting in the chat if you have anything else that we haven't asked um, <clears throat> it's a good question by all means it's just machine guns through you all <laughs> Mexican I don't know I don't know if you can answer this because I don't know what the deal is like right now, but uh, a lot of people are wondering if there's any directors you'd like to see direct it. If one's already attached and you can't talk about it, obviously don't. No directors are attached right now. Um, if I could have my kick of the litter, uh, Alfonso Caron, the guy that did Children of Men, uh, David Fincher, you guys hopefully know who that is. Yeah. Uh, who else? <clears throat> I mean, there's other people out there. I haven't really put too much thought into it. I want someone that can bring a serious, badass movie, but someone that can also bring humor to it. If Edgar Wright directed LMS to Go York or whatever, it would make no money. No one would go see it. Mm. Just like So, you know, we need someone that has a name, but is also talented. Mm. Hey, I got a, I got a question, because this kind of goes along with what you're saying about being a hermit. So you, you're saying you're a hermit. You don't go out that often whatever you know you go out and get drinks with you know clients or whatever yeah but how did how did you then go about doing all the networking stuff like was was that based around the just just doing online stuff or no it was my like i said my business partner stefan introduced me to a lot of people it's all really through him he'll set up meetings i'll go down there meet them and then through that person i'll meet someone else and then blah blah blah. i'll go from there and there and just continue to grow Mm -hmm. It's really true him. Or so like you get a free run or turn conventions or stupid Hollywood bullshit parties. You have to go to those? Some of them, yeah. That's awful. That's terrible. What's that like? Well, what do you work on? Well, I'm working on this. Well, you're working on that. I'm working on this. And just, uh, 15 just, minutes of that and then an awkward silence and then you both walk away. Just comparing dick sizes. Yeah. <laughs> That's terrible. Uh, so, we've got a question here. Uh, is music an important thing in your development when you're doing painting? Is there anything specific you like to listen to? And if so, the second part of that question is, would you want that kind of stuff in the movie when it gets made? Like, how much of what you're doing comes from that, and would you want that to carry over into the film? Um, yeah, I listen to uh, Nine Inch Nails. I love Trent Reznor. I love if he scored the movie. Um, but I listen to a lot of electronic stuff, some alternative, some rock. Uh, really just whatever inspires the mood. A lot of electronic music inspired LMS. Um, but yeah, you know, I, I'm still unclear on the soundtrack, what I want exactly. But hopefully it's just cool. Mm -hmm. uh, what about LMS? I know it's been sold out everywhere, like, forever. And now it's like tons of money on Amazon. I think I saw it for like 800 bucks or something that, like yeah. around that. Like do you have any plans to like republish this and like what happens with something like that where it's like you you have it, you get it published and then, you know, all of a sudden it doesn't exist anymore 
do you have the ability to republish it or like oh yeah i got the rights back from heavy metal so they're all mine uh, we are in talks of uh, doing a digital version of the book and also we will be publishing it soon it'll be self-published cool um oh god mistake and i hate your name first off <laughs> second off this question's really stupid but you keep asking it so i'm just going to address that it's stupid and then ask it it's where stupid. do i see myself in five where do you see years? yourself in five years dan louise <laughs> more specific uh, five to ten Five to ten. Where do you see yourself in five years, and then where do you see yourself in ten years? How does the five compare to the ten? Dan Lavusi, if you could have anything if the, if the in ten, five years, what would it be? If the, ten, if the ten years doesn't work out for you, would you want to go back to the five and rethink the next five for the ten? What kind of mistakes are you planning to make between five and ten? Um, in the next five years, I hope the first LMS is out. I hope it's successful. I hope Redemption's out and it's on its way. Um, hopefully money is no longer an issue so I can just continue to work and draw and create. Um, I would love to have my own studio in 10 years. I think that'd be really cool. This but, I know. <laughs> How big is your gold house? <laughs> it's, it's made just of checks and cash. It's a paper house. Melted, yeah, molted, or melted into gold. Every oh, time sure. it gets windy out, piece blows <laughs> off, you just put more money up. Yeah, I, do. I lick it and put it out. <laughs> um, God. Yeah, God. I'm looking at these questions right now. What's the <laughs> difference just, between collectors and normal edition? Just, One of them flying. is the same, but costs more. <laughs> they're just flying by. Yeah, I know. What yeah. about the booty tootie? I use a Mac. <laughs> Since, since Dan didn't study, does he not think it's crucial to artistic development? So he better, or I'm going to hang like up on him. I try to change you into the artist that you're not. So. That's my whole opinion on college. All right, guys, pack it up. Dan didn't study. You don't have to. You're, you're done. <laughs> Go get some jobs. <laughs> Remember, guys, it's not about how good you are. Oh, it's about, uh, well, I don't know, because... <laughs> Uh, I, I studied. <laughs> Do I go to camp? No. I wasn't, uh, I wasn't gonna ask you this. I, I, I'm just gonna ask you all the horrible questions because people won't stop. I've typed in the chat, don't ask it again. I've said it out loud, don't ask it again. You're not taking the hint, so guess what, booty tootie? I'm gonna ask you, I'm gonna ask you a fucking question. And your question is, how many processors does Dan have, and what are they? How much RAM does he have, and what are they? Because if I get processors and RAM, I'm going to paint just like Dan, obviously. I'm not going to say anything. Tell us what your processors are, Dan. We want to be. Fucking, I have a computer. That's all I need to know. Where? Tell me what kind of air conditioner you have. Tell me what kind of fridge you have. Dan, what size shoe are you? And. I gotta know the res that you work at. Do you want an Android phone or an iPhone? You gotta tell me which one I'm gonna get. If you could live alone anywhere, where would it be and why? <laughs> could you do without parents, or was that a big deal? Dan Lavusi, Nintendo 64 or Commodore 64? Which one do you have? Nice. <laughs> Nintendo 64. Can you talk about the Good design answer. in Jet Force Gemini? Were you a fan? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Jesus. Uh, and on that. <laughs> <laughs> Just perfect. Just. <laughs> Dude, what is he drilling? <laughs> Dan, what are you doing? Uh, Dan, what are hey, do you uh, do you want to make video games? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> what other? Industries besides your uh, industry, do you want to industrialize? <laughs> That's the one. <laughs> what, what, what? Do you ever want to work in another industry? Like, uh, if you get if you get really bored and making money, do you, would you like to do like something else? Like music? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, maybe one day become a poet. That's <laughs> cool. Be a poet. Do you have enough money to be Batman? I see the Batman <laughs> questions I want to ask. <laughs> Uh, no, it was just... Good. What are the most helpful books you have ever read? <laughs> <laughs> I 
Oh, a lot God. of Dr. Seuss. <laughs> a lot of Dr. Most the most useful book he's ever read was Cooking on a Budget by Gordon Ramsay. <laughs> <laughs> really good way to get by a tight situation and still enjoy your meals. <laughs> what hair jelly? I don't know. What the fuck is hair jelly? God, hey, this hey, is Dan. Just, this is such shit. Yeah, it's it fell just apart. Let it, it's just gone now. How big Sorry. is my car? Should be how small is it? <laughs> oh god. All your images are super detailed. How do you know when they're done? <laughs> I just want to get art, I'm done. Do you ever get stuck on an art piece and just have to start over, or is everything you do fucking perfect? <laughs> That's a question we've had about 75 times. What's the question? Do you ever get stuck? On or an is image. everything you do great? Is everything just flawless? Have you ever thrown anything away? Oh my god, everything I do is perfect. See, so. I told you guys. Oh god! I can't even read the chat, guys. Guys, the chat's going by too fast. Yeah. How many people are here, by the way? Just uh, five, 535. Jeez. Uh, sorry, everybody. <laughs> what are you dead? Hey, Dan. Yeah. Yo. How am. <laughs> <laughs> Both of us at the same time, yo. How important yeah. do you think it is to support the community that supports you? That's uh, a real it, question. It's incredibly important. I mean, they're the ones that are making my gold house. So, without them, you know, like, I wouldn't be where I'm at. So you, do you gotta support Do you spend a lot of time doing that kind of stuff? Uh, yeah. You well, know, I just like, I just noticed that, like, on Facebook, it's, like, your personal page, and you'll also, you'll, like, obviously you... Add everybody. That's what it looks like. Yeah, no, I add everyone. And I, I try to stay very open and, you know, like LMS, I put over a thousand names in the back of the book of people that supported it, all their DVR names. Uh, uh, so yeah, you know, I try to whenever I can try to give them a shout out. Yeah, because like on on the Crimson Daggers thing, like everything that we do is like, you know, like we're trying to physically like help people get to a point. So it's like you know. You pretty much get everything by helping other people get what they want. Yeah. So it's like, do you agree with that? Like the sort of thing is like, if you're doing something and you just help people, like you never know when somebody's gonna help you, right? That yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. And that's um, like, has that like helped you in any way? Like that kind of like always, you know, appreciating people for what they're doing and the, and you know like appreciating support and all that. Has that like well, ever you know, come like, back? Um, more in a personal way, never in like a you know, like a business sense, but I don't know, like growing up, I tried to talk to a lot of artists and they never cared and they never like, you know, helped out. And I was like, all right, you know, I want to be different. I want to, I do want to help these people out and teach them how to do what I'm doing. I, you know, I don't hide anything. I give them my brushes. I put up tutorials, you know, I'm not one of those secretive artists. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't, I feel like we should be trying to inspire future artists because otherwise what's going to come out of that? Uh, but, you know, if I've ever gained anything, uh, like my recent journal, you know, helping a little kid and hopefully inspiring him in drawing or giving a little kid a print for free at Comic-Con and watching, you know, him blow up in excitement. Like, shit like that means a lot to me. Um, question. Would you ever consider teaching digital painting or illustration somewhere? They're asking if you'd ever do it in a college. I'm going to expand that and just say anywhere. At a workshop, on an online class, for free on a stream. Would you ever consider education? Yeah. Uh, I totally would. Um, I think that'd be cool. I don't know if I'd be any good at it, but, uh, yeah, I think that'd be fun. Yeah, there's this really cool expanding online community of free education you could join that uh, Dave knows about. I've it's never called, uh, it's crimsondaggers.com. We have an <laughs> online forum. You could do a weekly stream. There's these two guys, Dave and Dan, that have been running it, and um, I mean, you'd be a welcome addition. I'm sure they'd love you. Yeah, no, I would have to do speed pains. I couldn't show it on work. There you go. There you go. I'm mm. done. It's officially on record. He's gonna <laughs> do it. I am locked back now. to a contract. Every Tuesday. <laughs> No, I don't know. I don't know what else.
else I want out of this conversation. I know. I think it's done. I just keep seeing people spam the same question over and over and over again in the chat. So, yeah, I don't know. How important do you think conventions are? <laughs> I don't know. So many things. In the chat. <laughs> I guess important. <laughs> well, uh, hey, Dan, I love you. I love you too. You too, uh, Dan. Hey, I just met you, but I think. I think, you think we got something going here. I feel a spark. I'd love to kindle it into a form. Yeah, no, for sure. How do you Which spell your stuff? DeviantArt? How Adonis. do I spell it? Yeah, what is it? A D O N I H S. Yeah, go there. Adonis.deviantArt.com. Look at all this stuff. If somehow you don't know him and you're just here for some reason, I don't know. Oh, one last one, just in general, because people have been asking like crazy, and I'm actually interested too. You might have already answered this. I can't remember. Uh, when the do we have to wait till the movie comes out to get a reprint of the book because it's not available no. like anywhere? No, the book will be out uh, probably before this year's Comic Con, um, and then the comics. I don't know. I've already read uh, four scripts for the comics, where each like three hundred to four hundred pages. Um, so I'm ready to go on that. I'm not going to draw them because I don't have the patience. Uh, so we're trying to look for an artist right now that we would enjoy to do it. Uh, oh, that's cool. So when those are ready, you know, those will be out. But so I find an artist. Cool. Mm-hmm. That's that. All right. Well, uh, thanks for hanging out with us. Of course, it was my pleasure. Thank you. Thanks, man. It was good talking to you. Yeah. I'm gonna sure. I'm gonna shovel some stuff out to everybody. Oh, can I go first? Uh, yeah, you can. Guys, if you enjoyed this talk, we've done a few in the past. We're gonna try doing more of them in the future. Uh, I can't say what day yet, but if you follow either of us on Twitter, sometime next week we're gonna have Kemp uh, Remillard on. He's a um, concept artist at Massive Black Studios. If you guys know them, he's gonna come on and talk about what it's like working in the studio world, working on big projects, stuff like that. Uh, being part of a team, that kind of thing. So that'll be our next Crimson Conversation sometime next week. I'm not sure on the day yet, but again, if you follow either of us on Twitter, we'll be posting about it far in advance. And if you're on the Crimson Daggers forums, we'll have a thread up about it. So, Yeah, and if you don't know and you're just here to look at Dan Lucy's uh, chess, uh, <laughs> we, we're we actually a free online study group that meets Those like... packs right there. We, we yeah. meet every day. Like, every day one of us is on here. Or we're both on. Hours yeah, Dan's on for 10 hours a day. So if you want to come hard. back and hang out. Yeah. Yeah, so you go to crimsondaggers.com. All the links are there. We do a critique stream. We'll do live panovers of your work for free. And uh, we do that every Sunday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We also have bi-weekly challenges, which is the blood sports, and on there, like, we're doing action figure packaging right now, where you got to design your own toy based on our three IPs. Tons so we had, like, Crystal Crusaders, Legends of Lizards, <laughs> and Guerrilla yeah. Guardians, just the worst ideas that you somehow got to make cool. Like, if anyone's interested in, in expanding their portfolio, getting some extra work done, having an extra reason to go, you know, do the extra mile or whatever you got to do, like, the Blood Sports has been great. It's been getting bigger and bigger. Like David said, we're doing the action figure packaging now. Before that, if anyone saw in Kotaku, got reblogged a couple places, we did the redesign of the cover to the NES game Gauntlet. You know, before that, we had a character environment challenge. Um, before that, a character challenge, you know. Everything we do in the blood sports is tailored for industry-specific jobs that you could get as a pro, so it's kind of getting you ready. It is a pro, so it's kind of... Echoing. Oh, going. Going. <laughs> Get your headphones uh, back in, Dan. Get headphones for a second. But, uh, yeah, so uh, if you guys are interested in joining the group or doing any of that stuff, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, so come on, like you said, every day. CrimsonDaggers.com, CrimsonDaggers.com slash forum. Yeah. So we love we love you. Thanks. You guys are all real cute. And again, thanks to Dan Lavisi for coming on. And oh. Yeah, you're you're a great guy. You're gonna be uh, rolling. You're talking. To hey. Me? hey. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> Thank you. If you, if you make a ca if you make a cameo in a movie. A movie, movie, movie. Can, can you make? Can you make a little secret wink so we all know it's for us? Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just 
<laughs> main character just stops and looks at the screen and winks. Yeah. yeah. And then like, he says, the and then he says, <laughs> Dan Warren, Dave Raposa, yeah. you are the last men standing. <laughs> and then the credits roll. Something oh, like that. No. I don't know. There it is. <laughs> Uh, for sure, I'll do that. Okay, goodbye, everybody. <laughs> oh!